Hello and welcome everyone for a little bit of a recap for the Nintendo Direct that just happened on September 4th in the year 2019. I'm uh, doing a little bit of a solo cast today. I uh, thought I'd just kind of jot down some notes and talk about some of the news that happened. Just kind of up front, I apologize for any like background noise that's going on. I'm looking to improve my recording setup shortly in the next month or so, so I apologize of any of those sounds. Um, but to kind of jump right into it, I thought this was a really good direct. We had a lot of shadow drops. I was very happy with, uh, I'm using the term shadow drops as like an easy allies term of like, hey, guess what? This thing is announced and it's out now, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, just kind of jumping right into it. The first thing that I'm glad they got out of the way was Overwatch. Uh, so this had actually leaked a few weeks ago, like maybe, yeah, probably about a week ago or so. Um, there was on Amazon, there was a, uh, Nintendo Switch, uh, carrying case that had the Overwatch logo and it leaked. And so that was pretty much a dead giveaway that, hey, this game's probably coming to switch at some point. Um, and we finally got the uh, release date and some little bit information on it today. Uh, it'll be coming out October 15th, and it will be having some gyro controls, so kind of some Switch-specific functionality. Kind of curious how this game's going to do uh, on Nintendo Switch, because I, I just don't know if, you know, the player base is going to be all that big for it. I do know that, uh, like, Diablo 3, which is a completely different game, but also made by Blizzard, was really, like, sold really well on Switch. So that's, you know, probably what prompted them to put more games out. Uh, I thought it would be kind of cool if this game had, um, like, cross-play support, but I don't think anything like that has been announced. I'm uh, just really happy this was the first thing they got out, because if this would have been, like, one of the last announcements, we would have just known, excuse me, we would have just known this was coming. Um... So, yeah. Uh, next up, we had Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, we kind of had some extra details. This was one of the kind of tentpole games they mentioned that they were going to have new information on, that and Pokemon. Um, so Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion 3, um, we have these new things called Tomb Suites, which it looks like to me, I kind of jo uh, jotted down in my own notes, like mini dungeons a little bit. Like they're like dungeons inside of like the hotel that you kind of have to solve. Like one was like a pyramid, I think. Um, later on, we had, uh, the reveal of Scream Park, which is kind of their multiplayer mode. You have, like, a team of four players playing Luigi and four players playing Gooigi. Um, that looks kind of cool. Uh, we did finally get the release date for that, and they did actually announce October 31st, Halloween, that game comes out. So that's a, that's a pretty cool announcement, I would say. Next up, we have Super Kirby Clash. I really would say this looks like that 3DS game they announced or, or had released. Um, that was a free-to-play Kirby game. It was like Team Kirby Clash something. Something Clash and Kirby in it. Um, maybe the word deluxe in there at some point. I don't remember. I actually played it a fair amount because it was free-to-play or free-to-start, as Nintendo says. Uh, it looked pretty much just like the 3DS game, kind of the same gameplay mechanics. I would assume that them putting this game out on Switch, I'm going to assume that 3DS game did really pretty well sales-wise, so um, that's cool. Uh, and it is available now, which was I, put, I also wrote down, like, that's Shadow Drop number one. It's, it's, it's out now, so you can go download that on your Switch. I've downloaded it, but I have not played it yet, so I look forward to playing it soon. Next up, we have Trials of Mana. Uh, we kind of known about this. It was one of the E3 announcements. April 24th, 2020. Uh, I also wrote down, it looks a lot better than the PS4 Secret of Mana. Uh, I don't really know too much about uh, the series, but I do also know that I guess Trials of Mana is also coming to PS4 as well. Um, along as that uh, Collection of Mana is also out on Switch, I think, currently. Next one was kind of a surprise. We had Return of the Obra Din. It was the Papers, Please developer. I don't remember his name, I apologize, but that game's been on PC, I think it's on mobile, uh, Papers, Please, came to Vita at one point. Uh, Return of the Obra Dinn came out last year on PC, I think it was kind of late, uh, late 2018, uh, but this game's coming, it'll be fall 2019, that's kind of a nice surprise indie game coming. Next up, we had the game uh, that was originally called Just Town, uh, is now called Little Town Hero, and it was, uh, this is actually a Game Freak game, and Game Freak's the developers of Pokemon. It was announced that Toby Fox was doing, like, a majority of the music and that the game's coming out October 16th, so I don't think any of us expected that game to come out as 
fast as it's seeming to. Uh, I want to say there was a part in the trailer where it said, you're going to fight enemies with ideas. And I thought that was kind of kind of clever. Um, I would love to fight things with ideas. <laughs> next, uh, we do have maybe the biggest, perhaps this next game had like the biggest news come out of it. We did have a Smash Ultimate update, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, Shadow Drop number two, Banjo and Kazooie are available now. That was pretty incredible. I had actually just picked up Smash Ultimate. Uh, I had rented it before, but I actually just bought it just a, like a week or so ago. Um, so Banjo is now. They had a uh, little kind of video uh, talking about Banjo after the direct that Sakurai, Masahiro Sakurai, the you know director of the game, was going over, um, showing just a lot of cool in and out stuff about it. Um, they mentioned, like, you can play the original Banjo game on Xbox, and you can play it on Xbox One, and the Banjo and Kazooie license is owned by Microsoft Corporation. Like, it was just kind of kind of funny. Um, and even Sakurai was like, I know they're kind of a competing platform, but please play their game, uh, which was kind of cool. Um, but back to uh, the direct proper, we did also get announced that Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury is coming, uh, it looked like maybe late this year, I think it was November, I want to say. Um, that kind of got leaked a few days ago. There was the Challenger Pack 4 uh, store listing and it listed SNK on it so that was kind of a giveaway and like Terry Bogart is probably like the biggest character from SNK like the most recognizable so that was that was kind of a giveaway they had a really cool like 16-bit cinematic that went with it uh, I would recommend anybody just go watch it again if you if you you know have already seen it even, anyways uh, it's like the smash invite and it's like you know going through all these different SNK characters from the Neo Geo uh, and, like, trying to grab this envelope to be invited, and then Terry is the one who picks it up, fam finally. Uh, and to getting to the part where I think it's, like, maybe the biggest news, there is more fighters coming separate from the Fighters Pass. So the Fighters Pass, uh, which was announced, uh, you know, kind of alongside the game later on, it was only going to have five characters, and that was going to be it. But uh, I think Smash and, excuse me, Nintendo is just kind of figuring out, hey, you know, if you guys just want to keep paying for characters, we'll just keep making more of them. So I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know if anybody was really expecting that because with Terry Bogard announced, we only technically had one more character that was going to be left, and that was going to be the it. Um, so now after the announcement of Banjo, we had Terry Bogard. Um, now we're getting even more characters afterwards, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, they also did have a uh, little me costumes update that you can buy for like 75 cents each. And they had an Sans Undertale like me costume that apparently people just lost their minds over. Uh, I didn't really know. I, 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 don't, I haven't really played Undertale, so I don't really know. But apparently that was like a really big deal for some people. So happy for those people. Next up, we had Link's Awakening. Uh, it's coming out very shortly. Uh, later this month, we had some new footage and also got a little bit of details on the Amiibos. We found out about the dungeon creator uh, back at E3, and now we know that like Amiibos can uh, load up those dungeons, and you can give your Amiibos to your friends, and they can play your dungeons, that kind of thing. I feel like for the 100th time, we've gotten an update on Dragon Quest Eleven S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, I think is the name of that. Uh, there was literally nothing new to say here just that there's a free champions pack coming for dlc it was just it seemed to just be like another reminder like hey guess what this is also coming again which i feel like the last three times this has been in a direct or something like that it's basically been the same information um so they really want you to play that uh we next announcement we had uh a wii u port coming to switch which i'm kind of not surprised by this is one that i really thought would make the jump over to switch uh, and that is tokyo mirage sessions sharp fe and encore is the kind of tagline on it uh, it has new content it's got like a new song january 17th 2020 you can pre-purchase now on the eShop. It's a game that matches uh, Shin Megami Tensei stuff and Fire Emblem together. It's uh, kind of talking to Curtis, who I do the do the main crossplay podcast with. You know, I was just telling him like I don't really care about Fire Emblem or Shin Megami Tensei, but this game looks pretty cool, honestly. Uh, that was a game that even if I had a Wii U, I would probably want to play. 
Next up, maybe what maybe two people were ever asking for, we're getting a sequel to Deadly Premonition. Uh, so Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, was announced for 2020, and also announced that Deadly Premonition Origins, which, excuse me, Origins, which was the original game, is coming on the eShop today, and that is what I marked down Shadow Drop number 3. Um, I played a little bit of the original Dem- Deadly Premonition. It got like a PS3 port at one point. It's just weird. I understand why it has like this cult following, um, but it's just, you know, so many other games. I just don't know if I wanted to jump into that, but I think that's cool. Apparently that's a Switch exclusive, at least at launch, so I don't know if or when that's coming to other platforms. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition was the next announcement, and the big thing with that is it has Steam cross save. so if you have the game on PC, you can get it on Switch and transfer your Steam cross, or excuse me, your Steam save on PC, then you can switch, play it to your Switch, and then switch back and forth. Uh, that's Shadow Drop number four I wrote down. Uh, Doom 64 got a little message from Bethesda coming November 22nd. This had kind of been... I guess leaked a little bit. There was like maybe an ESRB rating or a PEGI rating for this game uh, when the original Doom games came out around QuakeCon. Uh, I do know that... So it's coming to Switch November 22nd, and I think somebody posted on Twitter to the like official Doom um, Twitter account, like, man, this sure would be cool if it was on other platforms as well. And the Doom account just said, yeah, that would be pretty cool, huh? So I expect that to come to PS4, Xbox One, PC eventually. Um, but yeah, even just stuff I didn't know is like Doom 64 is like a completely different game than the original Doom. Like it was just a, it was just a completely original game made for the 64, uh, which was like a Nintendo 64. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I would say the game that has the most, um, mystery around it was our next title. It's a game called Rogue Company from High res Studios and High res Studios, the makers of Smite, and I believe this looks like an online game. I don't know if it's like 4v4, 6v6. It looks like you have different characters with different abilities um, fighting each other. That's coming in 2020. Um, it actually looked pretty good. I assume what they showed was in-engine footage, people with swords, people, you know, with guns, that kind of stuff. Um, it looked kind of cool. Uh, next up, we had our other big tentpole announced game for the Direct, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I don't really have much to say about it. We have Pokemon Camp, which is... I guess a way that you can go to camp camp with your friends and get new Pokemon. Uh, I also wrote down there's a teacup Pokemon because, of course, I don't know if they're running out of ideas. I'm not really a Pokemon fan, so you can please flame me on Twitter at Bossman C. Crowder with my terrible Pokemon takes. Uh, next up, we had uh, Super Nintendo games on Nintendo Switch Online. We kind of figured this was coming. Uh, there was, like, an update to the NES uh, Nintendo Switch Online, I feel like, at some point, and that basically got data mined saying that, hey, Super Nintendo games are coming, which wasn't really a big surprise. Uh, there's 20 games coming at launch for the service, which is actually now available now uh, as you're listening to this. Uh, it was just one day later after the Direct. Uh, I'll read through the 20 lists of games that have been announced. So we have Super Mario Kart, Kirby's Dream Course, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, F-Zero, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Super Mario World, Star Fox, a game they really kind of uh, built up called Stunt Race FX. I've heard about before, and I guess you haven't really been able to ever play that on another platform before um, until now, um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Super Metroid, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Pilot Wings, Super Soccer, Super Tennis, Brawl Brothers, Brawl Brothers Demon's Crest, Joe and Mac 2 Lost in the Tropics, Super EDF, Earth Defense Force, Super Puyo Puyo 2, Breath of Fire, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts were the original 20 games they announced for the service. Uh, And in addition to that, they announced a standalone SNES wireless controller that can be powered over USB for $30. I think that looks pretty cool. I I think it looks a lot better than the Joy-Con NES controllers they announced uh, for the original NES online. Uh, but I think 30 bucks is pretty cool, um, and it's just one controller, it's USB, you can just charge it. Um, so I, I quite like that, for sure. I don't think I'll get one, but it's only exclusive for Nintendo Switch Online members, which I am. But uh, that's still neat regardless. Um, that was Shadow Drop number 5 I wrote down. 
The next little shadow drop uh, was Tetris 99 has its 2.0 update. It's uh, got a new mode called Invictus, and it's out today. Um, it's got like different online modes. It's got like a co-op mode, I think, something like that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. We got 20 events. We got 2D events, which were kind of shown off uh, maybe about a week or so ago, which is which is actually pretty neat. Um, so you got like 8-bit Mario and 16-bit Sonic like running through stuff and, you know, pixeled, um, pixelated uh, Eggman doing stuff. Uh, apparently there's a story mode as well, which I think that's kind of notable. I think that'd be kind of fun to play around with. Uh, that'll be out November 5th. Uh, next up, we have Damon X Machina, which is a game I feel like we've been hearing about forever, but actually got announced last E3, not this previous one, but the one before. Uh, it's getting another prologue demo. That was our last shadow drop uh, that I wrote down. It's getting a prologue demo. Uh, I think it's like maybe the first hour or two of the game. And if you actually pick up the game on September 13th, your progress from that demo will carry over to the full game. So that's kind of cool. Next up was a game that I was not expecting to see ever again. Uh, we had Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast um, from Aspire, uh, the developer kind of revitalizing this game. Uh, that'll be out September 24th, and it was also announced right after that uh, this game is coming out on at least PlayStation 4. I don't know about Xbox, but it is coming to other platforms, I think, day and date. Uh, next, we got a couple updates on some games. Witcher 3 coming October 15th. The uh, new announcement of the Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection, which is AC4 and AC Rogue um, coming out, which were two pretty good games. I really like Rogue. I really like uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It's coming. Also, Dauntless, uh, which is a game that's been on other platforms I think people kind of like. Um, that's coming out on Switch at some point. It's also going to be cross-play. Uh, down to the last few things, last before the last two, we had a sizzle reel, and I'll kind of run these off real quick. We have Just Dance 2020 coming November 5th, Grid Autosport September 19th, Farming Simulator 20 December 3rd, the original Nino Kuni coming September 20th, NBA 2K20 coming September 6th, Call of Cthulhu coming October 8th, The Outer Worlds is coming soon, which makes me think I don't think it's day and date with the other platforms, um, so... That's kind of disappointing, but kind of assumed. Devil May Cry 2 coming September 19th, and Vampire, uh, the Don't Nod game that I would love to play at some point, uh, coming October 29th. So we're finally down to our last two, um, a game that they spent a lot of time on and kind of just showing new features, Animal Crossing New Horizons. We kind of saw that more at E3. Uh, we got new gameplay features. Uh, there's a phone. We got some new crafting stuff. It was just kind of like a, they pitched it as like the introductory to your desert island escape. Um, I don't really have much to say on it. Um, I haven't really been that big of an Animal Crossing fan, but what they showed, I mean, looked kind of like normal Animal Crossing stuff, so it looked kind of cool. Uh, and again, that game's coming March 20th. And finally, the last announcement was that we're getting a definitive edition of the original Xenoblade Chronicles in 2020. Uh, so this was the original Xenoblade Chronicles by Monolith Soft that came out to Wii in 2012. I want to say maybe 2015, 2016, it got a uh, version on the only the new Nintendo 3DS. Um, so, you know, it's already been released before, but this uh, definitive edition of the original Xenoblade Chronicles looks like they've really gone back and touched up a lot of the stuff. Uh, I think um, Game Explain, which is a great channel, uh, YouTube channel you guys should check check out if you haven't already, uh, they put up some side-by-side -side comparison stuff of what the original game looked like and what the new game looks like, um, just from the brief trailer they showed. Because uh, they showed Shulk, who was in the original game, and I know him from Smash Brothers. Uh, I thought they were going to announce like a brand new game. Like I thought it was maybe going to be Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, I know they still... I would, I would probably honestly say they might go back and bring back Xenoblade Chronicles X and put it on Switch, which was the Wii U game. Um, I mean, they're basically bringing over everything else from Wii U, so might as well bring over that game at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm not really a big Xenoblade Chronicles fan. I was kind of like disappointed because I was like, ah, that series doesn't really do it for me. Um, but I know a lot of people are excited, so that's cool. And then, yeah, just at the end, they were just like, hey, that's all we have to show you today. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in, so... Uh, that wrapped up uh, that Nintendo Direct. I don't know 
if we're going to get another one before the end of the year. Uh, I would say this might be it, and that might just lead up to the January Direct. Uh, I mean, we got some pretty big, pretty big games coming out for Nintendo Switch, and even just from what I listed, there's a lot of stuff coming from Link's Awakening, some more Smash stuff, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, Damon X Machina, uh, we got the, you know, the Mario and Sonic games, Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, and then even just some of the third party stuff, you know, Dragon Quest XI, um, Astral Chain just came out, I mean, there's, there's a lot on Switch right now, um, which is really cool, um, but, uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for just the recap, I just thought I'd share a little bit of my thoughts on the games they announced, and, you know, hopefully you found this enjoyable, uh, I'm really excited to maybe do some more recording, might be a little bit before I get some stuff set up in a new place, but, um, yeah, I love just kind of doing some of this reaction stuff, or maybe if you're just, uh, you know, cleaning the kitchen, playing a game, something, you can just have this on in the background. Uh, but definitely let me know what you thought. Again, sorry for some of, maybe there was some background noise, something like that, trying to get that cleared up in the future. But until then, thank you for joining me. We'll see you later.